Welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to continue our focus on market structures with a particular emphasis on monopoly and monopoly graphs. So today's lesson overview, we're going to review the characteristics of a monopoly. We're going to differentiate between the demand curve of an individual perfectly competitive producer versus the demand curve of a monopolist. We're going to define price discrimination, what exactly price discrimination is, and correctly draw the components of a monopoly graph with the demand curve, marginal revenue, ATC, MC, equilibrium price and quantity, deadweight loss, making profit, uh, incurring loss, and also breaking even. Finally, or second to uh, last year, we're going to compare monopoly versus perfect competition in terms of allocative efficiency. And also, we're going to understand elasticity of demand on the demand curve and its impact on total revenue. So product markets. So we're still, we're still on this huge section on product markets. Now, as a reminder, this is 55 to 70% of your AP exam. So this is a huge portion of the AP exam and consequently a large focus of these lectures cater towards understanding the product markets. So this portion here is going to cover uh, understand the relationship between a monopolist demand curve and its marginal revenue curve. Students learn how a monopolist total revenue curve changes along demand curve, changes along its demand curve as price varies. Students should compare a monopolist price, level of output, and profit with those of a firm operating in a perfectly competitive market. By paying particular attention to the concept of allocative efficiency, what is this allocative efficiency? Students should uh, learn how and why competitive markets achieve an efficient allocation of resources whereas monopolists do not. Monopolists are not allocatively efficient. The concept of deadweight loss is a good device to show the efficiency loss due to monopoly. The model of price discrimination provides another dimension of monopoly behavior that students need to learn and understand. So basically, there are a lot of different parts of uh, monopoly. I've actually broken down uh, monopoly into two separate lectures. Uh, the first one here, the basics of monopoly. The second lecture is going to be monopoly and public policy. So what are the characteristics of a monopoly? What are, what are things that, that, um, that make a monopoly? Well, we do know that a monopolist is the only producer, hence there's only one seller of a good with no close substitutes. And it tends to have at least, at least, sometimes more, uh, one of these four barriers to entry. The first uh, first barrier to entry is the control of a scarce resource or input. Uh, uh, Cecil or Cecil Cecil Rhodes made the beers what it is by controlling most of the world's diamond mines. If you're the only one producing that product, you're you're well poised to dominate that particular market. Economies of scale. So there's certain industries where it's better for only one firm to produce. So large firms tend to have cost advantages in markets characterized by economies of scale or a natural monopoly. So a natural monopoly, it's just better for there to be one seller. For example, uh, trash services is if one firm uh, controls the trash pickup for the entire neighborhood, chances are the average total cost is going to be cheaper than if you have five or six different trash services competing in the same neighborhood. So that would be an example of maybe economies of scale or natural monopoly. Uh, another very simple thing is technological superiority. So short short term advantage, uh, short term advantage for companies, although network externalities are very crucial as well. So for example, Microsoft Word might not have been the best uh, particular uh, product out there on the market. However, as more and more users started using Microsoft, uh, it's actually network externalities that caused uh, Microsoft to become what it is today. So it's not necessarily 
a, a long-term advantage for technological superiority, superiority, but it definitely does help for a firm to have technological superiority in order to have a monopoly. And the last type of monopoly is actually a government monopoly, and this one is fairly self-explanatory. Um, so, for example, a patent, which is a monopoly of invention. So if you, you create something, uh, you create a patent for it. Or a copyright, which is a monopoly of literary or, or artwork. So if the government uh, grants a, a monopoly, then it is the only entity that can actually produce that particular product.